Hey, booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw here to just do kind of a quick like catch up video. Uh, consider it a Friday reads, but a day early because I don't post on Fridays, or at least at the moment I don't post on Fridays. So yeah, it's been a while since I've touched in with you guys, but I feel like I haven't been consuming nearly as many books recently. I've kind of been, my focus has been on other media mostly because I'm entering like holiday crafting season so my hands are really busy I'm like making a lot of things and doing a lot of things starting to like plan a lot of stuff a couple months out because my niece is going to be with us for Thanksgiving this year not Christmas so we're doing it early and like it's a whole thing but it basically means I have to put all of my kind of crafting and holiday gears in motion a little bit earlier than normal so I've been like watching a lot of things if you've been following me on Twitter I've been doing a complete binge rewatch of all of the American Horror Story seasons which I am loving I just got to it's not the current season it's the most recent season before that so American Horror Story cult uh it's really hard to watch you guys if you don't know it, it literally opens with the election night in 2016 when Hillary Clinton lost and then goes forward from there and basically is from what I can tell I'm only like two episodes in because I had to stop is about maybe a clown cult but also like clowns that meets like a MAGA kind of thing Evan Peters is playing this like blue haired in Selly kind of make America great again scum I like can't even say the words out loud but as a horror piece it is functioning really effectively um I'm really glad I kept on with this rewatch because in my first like experience of the series I got really really bored with Hotel. Hotel actually ended up having some of my favorite storylines ever. Um the, the storyline between Tristan and Liz is maybe my favorite romantic storyline since um Evan Peters and Tysa Farmiga in Murder House whose names I don't remember because I am horrible with names but you guys can look it up. <laughs> um but anyway that the the horror factor like really dropped off for me after coven with freak show and hotel because i just felt like the operating premises of what we were supposed to find horrifying about both of those two things wasn't um i really enjoyed the devil's night serial killer like dinner party murder flashbacks and hotel that uh, there were no like basically high points for me in freak show um because the entire premise of how that show is supposed to operate on a horror level is actually just kind of really icky to me. Um, but anyway, all of this is to say is then we got back into Roanoke and I loved it. Roanoke is this kind of like reality show frame tale within a reality show kind of thing. Like the way they frame the story is first about, it's almost like a, an A and E inside true life like reenactment of this family story about going to this house in Roanoke and the, the crazy shit that happens to them and then once that wraps up it's a second reality show combining those real life people and the actors that play them in the reenactment re-going back to this house and for a show that operate that's like 10 11 episodes long and operates entirely on the principle of like the consistent reports of these crazy things happening it actually took until like the 10th or so episode till I was literally so frustrated that I was like why would you go back to the house and that was like the last episode so I was actually really surprised that it like sustained its narrative momentum for that long to keep doing it um and then and then cult and I just I just yeah so I'm putting a little pause on that but I'm really really enjoying it I've also been listening to a lot of the lore podcast which is um ghost stories, myths, folklores, things that operate in the gray area between truth and fiction. And and Aaron Minky really kind of breaks that down. Aaron Minky also a horror writer or a spec fic writer in his own right. Lore is a show that has now been put on Amazon. You can also buy books or audiobooks that are grouped thematically. So it's lore about like haunted places, lore about haunted creatures, lore about XYZ. So I'm really, really enjoying that. I'm asking for those hardback books for Christmas, so fingers crossed Santa comes through. But I am just, they're really short. They're about a half hour long, and they're like little ghost stories or folk tales or kind of a continuance of the oral tradition operating in these myths and folklores and kind of some of the scarier things. So really, really enjoying that one. Otherwise, I have finished Wild Beauty. I have extra book behind on my book bingo for where I'd like to be for Latinx book bingo, but it's the first now, so I've officially have two more weeks. So I feel confident that I will at least knock out that one top bar that I wanted to. I may not get to everything. We'll see, but fingers crossed for that. Otherwise, I've just started two new things. 
one is Gods of the Tango by Carolina de Robertis. Uh, this was, I saw recommended on Adriana's channel, Perpetual Pages. I, will, I just knew that I absolutely had to pick it up. Adriana is one of my absolute go-tos anytime I want Latinx reps, especially Latinx queer rep. And this book is not disappointing, although I'm only about 15, 20 pages into it. The prose is gorgeous and I'm really, really enjoying it. And I also started reading a nonfiction thing, which is always a little bit slower going. But my good friend Jenny and my other good friend Ira both kind of stamped this book as being really, really interesting. And it's... It's called Unbound, Transgender Men and the Remaking of Identity by Arlene Stein. This is another one that I literally have just started, so I'm just maybe like almost done with the introduction where she's laying out kind of the history of female to male transition and transness both in the United States and kind of globally. Obviously, it's a very, very compact uh, history looking basically at the surgical aspect of transitioning. Um, and I have a feeling that obviously that's going to be something that gets teased out into a larger and larger um, concepts as we progress through the book. But I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, gender is something that has always fascinated me. And in the last several years, the doors and language to me have kind of, I won't say that they were always there, but to me they have opened. And I'm really, really enjoying learning and growing and exploring all of the fascinating ways that gender presents and expresses itself in everybody. And it's just, yeah, that's a long conversation that I don't want to get into because this video is already longer than it should be than an update, but I will keep you guys posted and I'm really, really enjoying this. Otherwise, please let me know down below what you're reading, what you're enjoying, what you've been up to lately, just what media in general you're consuming. I know that not everybody uh, has the mental focus for books right now. If that is you, I understand. I want to know that I love you. I see you if you're going through a hard time. I know that these last couple weeks have been incredibly difficult. Please feel free to reach out. I am always here to support the people that I love the most. Otherwise, you can come and find me. All the social media is in the down bar. Take care of yourselves. Please take care of each other and have happy reading.